I've realized that whatever it was, that higher power that I called out to that day, that's what it wants me to do. I don't know if you want to go into like how it started or when I was a kid, 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 kid. I remember being in first grade at Calusa Elementary School. My art teacher, Miss Perry, had me draw whatever I wanted to draw because she was going to put it in the youth fair. I said, all right. And Easter was kind of rolling around and I was hyped up for the Easter Bunny and I, so I, drew, I drew the Easter Bunny riding a skateboard with a yellow Sony Walkman like pinned on himself with that and I won first place in the youth fair. It's a uh, little past midnight, we're at the Nike store on Lincoln Road, Miami Beach. Getting ready to install my, my Art Basel show for the Maker Studio. So usually our brand team uh, will find a, an artist that means something to the community and someone that uh, can tell kind of a local story through a Nike lens and I think that's where obviously we got Alex's name. Miami this week at Scope, we're representing our good chunk of our roster. We have over 100 artists on view here at the booth, including a local Alex Giannis, who we've worked with for a number of years now and who we love very dearly. Art Basel is two weeks away at this point. Um, I'm finishing up all of my work that'll be on display. This is actually an installation for Nike's Lincoln Road store. Then I'm also finishing up my pieces for the Scope Art Fair. There's some on the walls here. Um, this is probably my like showstopper piece, so to say, on the floor here. A lot of things have that have happened in my life have kind of culminated for me to be able to create this work when I look back on it. I've had all kinds of jobs. I've laid carpet with a friend of mine. I, I was actually a lifeguard and swimming instructor. I worked at the butcher shop in Costco packing salmon when my hands were frozen. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for where I'm at now, you know. One of my first shows was at the Anticulture Gallery on Northwest 36th Street when that's all that Wynwood was before it spread all the way down um, to 29th, you know, and further. We're in my studio right now um, out in West Kendall. These are a bunch of pieces for my upcoming show at the Paradigm Gallery in Philadelphia. It's gonna be titled The Feels. It's gonna say the feels in lettering um, here over the leaf pattern. You know, I didn't quit five minutes before the miracle happened uh, with my art. Because there were many instances where I was like, I can't do this anymore, I can't. I remember having a, having a show in Wynwood and uh, my, my daughter was on the way, my firstborn, and had this show in Wynwood and put up a bunch of pieces in the gallery and the opening night for Art Basel happened and a gentleman came to the show and bought my biggest piece for like, it was like $8,000. I was ecstatic. I called my wife and I was like, Babe, you'll never believe it. I just sold the biggest one, and like Art Basel doesn't start till tomorrow. And the next morning, you know, I went to bed on this high, and like the next morning, my buddy who ran the gallery calls me. He's like, "Man, I got bad news. This guy's check bounced." And and I was like, "Kidding me?" And it just took the wind out of my sails. And that, for me, that was, I wouldn't say a breaking point because I didn't quit, but it was enough of a, a letdown to where I contemplated just walking away from it.
and I was actually right here in my studio in this same, same spot. And I walked in the studio and I turned off all the lights in the middle of the day. And I was like, I'm just gonna sit here. It gives me goosebumps telling the story, man. Like I sat here and my, I'm not a religious person. I do believe in a higher power that makes everything function in this universe. And I, I called out to it and I just said, whatever you want me to do, I'll work construction, I'll, I'll pack fish, I'll, whatever you want me to do, I'll go to Alaska and work on a crab boat. Like whatever I gotta do to just feed my kid. And if it's not this, if it's not the art, what you want me to do, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with putting it away. I just want to survive. I meant it. I meant it with every cell in my body. I meant it. I got up and I walked out. And I just went on with my day. And I didn't want anything to do with Winwood. I was like, I'm, I don't want anything to do with Basil. I don't want to know what's going on. I just, the work is out. My phone rang. And it was a gentleman from San Francisco who was in town for Art Basel, and he saw four of my pieces, and he said, can I come visit your studio? I want to purchase all four of these pieces. And uh, he purchased four pieces, opened a gallery in Chicago, and we've worked together ever since. And that same day, later that afternoon, I got an email, and it was from a gentleman from Brooklyn, New York, who was here for Art Basel, and he said, Man, I saw your work, I've never seen anything like it. Would you be interested in having an exhibition in Brooklyn at my gallery? And I said, yeah. I flew out to Brooklyn, put up all the pieces, and it, the show sold out. And I felt like all of Brooklyn came to my show. And it was my, my first trip to New York. This all happened within a span of two months from when I sat in this studio and thought about quitting. And that's what I mean about, you know, not quitting five minutes before the miracle happens. It's a funny thing. I mean, I, re I remember being younger and thinking that I needed to leave Miami in order to have an art career, or any type of creative career, because a lot of my friends had to do that or did that. They went to New York. I thought, how can I do this and stay here? I don't want to leave Miami. My family's here. This is where I'm from. I love it here, you know? Uh, I couldn't picture myself living anywhere else. My work is inspired by my surrounding. I would say every day this table gets used for this. It's definitely encouraged in the house to, to make and create, and, and we love it. It's a lot of fun there because you could draw there, you could play games or video games. Living with your mom yeah. and, and me making art in the family room in the backyard, packing it into your Honda Civic and like driving it to anywhere he to could show anywhere it. I could show it and selling it. I sold it on the street, Nate, remember? On 8th Street, sold, sold it in Wynwood before Wynwood was before a thing, Wynwood like is, yeah. at bars, where, wherever, wherever anyone would let me put it out there. We're, we're dating and his art was his passion and I loved it. I was full support of it. Um, and we did those drives. We did those drives to bars to set up for that night to so just pack up and go and sometimes you'd get somebody interested and wanting to purchase a piece. Sometimes it was just a party and, and that's it and we'd pack up and go home. But he never stopped. And the fact that he didn't stop was the fact that he's still going. And that's the drive that he still has today. The drive today is the drive that he had back then when he didn't know what was going to come out of it and just to keep making and keep making. At this stage in my life, it's it's not about you know how many paintings can I sell, how, how much can I sell them for. It's about trying to inspire um, not just my kids but all kids 
um, to not just give, you know, not to give up. And if they have a passion, to stick with it. The day that I told my dad, I said, hey dad, I, I don't want, I don't want to be a graphic designer. I don't want, I don't want an office job. Like, I want to be an artist. And my dad, my dad's not an artist. My dad um, was a, a, a business guy. He's, al he's always, you know, worked. And I thought my dad was going to freak out. And my dad's, my dad's advice was like, okay, well, if, if you're going to be an artist, then you have to do it every day like it's your job. You got to paint every day. You got to make something every day. And, and that's what I've done. I mean, like, the minute I open my eyes in the morning, the first thought in my head is, what am I working on today? 